He is Mexico's most wanted man. The U.S. calls him the world's most powerful drug trafficker. He's at the top of the DEA's list, number 55 on Forbes' list of most powerful people. And the U.S. is offering $5 million for him. So who is Joaquin El Chapo Guzman? Chapo Guzman is uh, the most wanted man on the planet right now. Malcolm Beef is the author of The Last Narco. He's Mexico's most wanted drug trafficker. He's in charge of the Sinaloa cartel, which traffics tons of drugs into the United States and into Western Europe every year. Cocaine, methamphetamine, marijuana, heroin. Chapo works in a logical way. He wants to make money. He wants to get drugs across the border. Little is known of Guzman's childhood, only that he grew up in poverty. His father, a peasant farmer from the mountainous region of Mexico's Sinaloa state. So how does El Chapo compare to the powerful Colombian cartel leader of the 1990s, Pablo Escobar? I call Chapo the last narco. Uh, narco is a generic term for anyone involved in the drug trade. Uh, but he's the last narco of a certain breed, the breed that learned under Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, the godfather of the Mexican drug trade. And that was business first, quiet life, you know, don't seek attention, don't do a Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar in Colombia in the uh, 1980s and 90s uh, wreaked havoc on the state. He even wanted to run for Congress at one point, or he ran for Congress. That is the way a drug lord gets killed. So just how serious of a threat do El Chapo and Mexican cartels pose to America? Consider this. In nine months in 2011, there were nearly 13,000 drug-related murders. That's 48 a day, or one every half hour. In the last five years, nearly 50,000 have been killed. And here at home, those same cartels are known to operate in over 1,000 U.S. cities. Is Chapo as powerful a drug lord as Pablo Escobar was? Uh, I'd put them probably on equal footing. Michael Braun is the former chief of operations for the DEA. I've said this before, Griff, Chapo Guzman is a dead man walking. None of these guys ever live to a ripe old age where they're bouncing their grandchildren on their knees, uh, telling them, you know, stories that's just not in their DNA. They're driven by one thing, greed, an insatiable appetite for more. And that's part of the reason that Mexico got itself into trouble over the better part of six decades. Politicians, government officials, um, you know, law enforcement, military uh, authorities in that country attempted to manage organized crime by just cutting deals with them. Unfortunately, sometimes they were also motivated uh, by, by greed themselves and wanted to line their pockets. How far does Chapo's reach and tentacles go into the United States? Chapo Guzman and, uh, and the Sinaloa cartel are responsible for uh, drug trafficking in, uh, in many, many cities throughout the United States. It's important to understand that uh, Chapo's tentacles reach throughout Central America, the Isthmus of Central America, the Western Caribbean, the Eastern Pacific, uh, into the north coast of Colombia, uh, where uh, his sources for cocaine um, uh, are based. The only thing you ever accomplish uh, by cutting a deal, um, you know, with these with these groups, is you empower them, you help them grow stronger, and one thing for sure, they will break any agreement that you make with them within 24 to 48 hours because they want more money, they want more turf, they want more power. And um, you, you, you know, you simply can't deal with the devil. The devil will bite you in the ass every single time.